Hi, everyone, and welcome to climatetrace.org, where you can find timely, granular, and independently tracked greenhouse gas emissions data covering the entire globe. Today, I'll be sharing an introduction to the Climate Trace platform and a quick overview of how to navigate the site. To begin, let's discuss what exactly you can find on the website. The Climate Trace Emissions Inventory begins in 2015 and includes annual emissions through 2021. It can be sorted in a few different ways. You can view emissions totals by country, by major sector, and by subsector. You can also view data for individual emitting sources, for example, steel or cement plants, power plants, cargo ships, or oil and gas fields. To clarify, our inventory does not yet include all polluting sources worldwide, but it captures at least the largest 500 or more sources from each major sector. There are more than 80,000 sources included currently, and the inventory will expand to include tens of millions of sources by the end of 2023. In terms of the specific greenhouse gases we report on, our inventory shares emissions data measured in CO2 equivalent or CO2E. And we also break down the totals for three individual gases, which are carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Finally, this platform gives you the option to view emissions data based on 100 year global warming potential or 20 year global warming potential. Since some greenhouse gases like methane, for example, are more potent in the near term. In addition to interacting with the data on our website, you can visit the downloads page to access our full inventory, which includes detailed metadata for our asset level inventory with information on capacity, activity, and ownership where it's available. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the different options for viewing the data. From the homepage, click the Explore the Map button. Here you'll see a more detailed representation of the 80,000 plus individual sources of emissions in the inventory. The totals displayed on the map represent 2021 emissions. You can access previous years of data via our downloads page. Another way to get to this map is to click on the drop down menu from the top right corner of your screen and click on Map of Emissions. The emissions total in the bottom left of the map represents the total emissions from the countries and sectors you have selected. If you play around with filtering the map, you'll notice the emissions total will change, as will the list of assets or sources that appears across the bottom of the screen. You can now zoom in and drag around the screen to focus in on a specific location. And then by clicking on any of these dots, you'll quickly see what type of polluting source is found at that location, the 2021 emissions total for that source, and how it ranks compared to the other sources included in your selection. You can set some useful filters on this page by clicking the Show Filters button on the bottom right of your screen. From here, you can select a geographic region and even specific countries. You can filter by sector and then by subsector if you choose, selecting as few or as many as you'd like. You can choose to remain on the default gas setting of CO2 equivalent, or you can toggle between the individual gases listed here. Finally, you can either remain on the default setting of 100 year global warming potential, or you can toggle to the 20 year option. As a side note, for anyone who wants to understand more about global warming potential, uh, we published a helpful blog post, which you can find on our News and Insights page. And we'll also include the link here in the notes for this video. Now, if you're interested in digging into these data further and comparing these sites to one another, you can do so with our Compare tool. Just navigate to the drop-down menu here and click Compare Assets. The Compare tool allows you to rank and compare emissions by region and country, by sector and subsector, and even by individual source. Right now, it uses 2021 emissions data only. Not only are you able to compare different parts of the inventory to one another, this view of our asset level inventory gives you more insight into each source. By clicking on an asset card, you can see some of our detailed metadata, including the type of facility, ownership information where available, and the amount of activity at that site. Additional metadata like capacity and emissions factors 
are available on our downloads page. The filters that you'll see on either side of the page here are the same options that we've seen on other parts of the site, but here you have the ability to make two different selections, one on either side of the page, in order to make comparisons quickly and easily. So let's try an example. On the left side of the screen, let's go to the countries slash regions uh, section and we'll select Europe and then we'll narrow it down to a specific country. So let's select France, for example. Under select sectors, let's choose manufacturing. And then we can easily just select one option for subsector, but let's assume we're interested in all manufacturing emissions. So we will select all. Now for gases, I'm going to choose to stick with the default of CO2E instead of clicking uh, any of the other options here. And for our time horizon or our global warming potential metric, I'll also choose to stick with the default of 100 year instead of switching to 20 year. So now you can see we have the total estimate of all emissions from manufacturing in the country of France for the year 2021 on the left side of the screen. So let's assume we want to compare this to manufacturing emissions from another country on the right side of the screen. We'll start by selecting the other country. So let's choose maybe Austria, for example. Again, we'll select the manufacturing sector and then all subsectors so that we're comparing apples to apples. And again, we'll leave CO2E as our default metric for gas, and we will stick with the 100 year global warming potential. Now we have our two comparisons side by side, but the compare tool lets you dig even deeper than this. If you want to compare specific assets from these lists, you can simply click the card for each asset or source, and you'll see it outlined in blue. For example, let's click the highest ranking card on each side here, and you'll notice the two emissions totals at the top of the page have adjusted to reflect those assets only. If you click each card again to remove the blue highlights around the boxes, you'll once again be looking at the emissions totals for the full list on each side. Before we leave this page, we'll try one more adjustment. Let's say we want to compare different gases included in those manufacturing emissions for France only. So first we'll go to the left side of the screen and under gas, select CO2. Then we'll go over to the right side of the screen and swap out France for Austria. So click on the countries slash regions tab, click clear, and then we'll reselect Europe and we'll select France. Lastly, we'll go to the gas button here and select CH4 for methane. And now we can see the difference between those two gases in emissions from manufacturing for the country of France for 2021. So this comparison tool is easy to use and hopefully fairly intuitive, but it can really provide a, a wealth of information. So now let's go ahead and head over to the country inventory page. This page offers a simple way to sort through our data aggregated to the country and sector level from 2015 all the way to 2021. The filter options at the top of the page are fairly self-explanatory, and for the most part, they mirror the filter options we saw on the emissions map. You can select major sectors as well as subsectors. You can type in a country name or continent name in this box, or you can scan through all the options by clicking this option below the text box. For now, we'll select the All Countries button here at the top. You can also select which greenhouse gas to view by clicking through the options here. And you can select a specific year or even a span of years from 2015 to 2021. If you're using CO2 equivalent in your filter, you'll see the option here to toggle between 100 year and 20 year global warming potential. And while all these filter selections are being made, you'll notice this emissions total number changing and recalibrating as you go. Since I have a span of years selected here, I can also see 
the percentage change up or down in total emissions for my selected countries and sectors here. Regardless of what you selected, you can scroll further down the page to find some really interesting visualizations of the data, like a breakdown of subsectors within your selected sector, a list of countries in ranked order of their emissions total for the selected sector. The trends tab here will show you a graph of the change in emissions for the time period you selected. And then here the data tab will provide information on the sector selected and the related methodology. Now let's look at the data downloads page. We'll click the drop down menu and go to download data and methodology. First of all, I recommend clicking this read me button near the top of the page, which will show you some information on data permissions and usage disclaimers, suggested citations, and metadata descriptions. Once you're ready to export data, you can do, do so either by country or by sector. We'll start on the sector view here. Just click the CSV button under the data column for the sector you're interested in to start the download. But just be aware, these can be large files, especially for sectors like forestry and agriculture. The size of the file is listed so you're aware before clicking download. They include all emissions data from 2015 to 2021 on a country and sector level, as well as the applicable list of source level emissions for that sector, plus ownership data if it's available. For any questions about how the data is gathered and assessed, you can download the methodology document for each sector. Again, just click the PDF button under the methodology column for each sector as needed. If we look back at the top of the page, you can also toggle over to a country view and download emissions data for a country overall. This will give you country level totals broken down by sector and by subsector, as well as data on individual assets in that country. You'll notice there's an option here to download non-forest sectors or forest sectors. Forest sectors captures data on forestry and land use. We separated this sector out because our forestry and land use data covers every square kilometer of land on Earth, which means the file size is quite large. So to review, we've now gone through all four options for accessing climate trace data on this platform. First, we had the map of emissions from individual sources and then the compare tool. And these first two options both include 2021 data only. Third, we had the country inventory page, which includes all data from 2015 to 2021. And fourth, we had the data downloads page, which can be used to export detailed spreadsheets of all the data currently available by country or sector. Before we wrap up our introduction, let's quickly look at a couple more resources that can be found on the Climate Trace website. Under the drop down menu, you'll find a sectors definition page. At the top of the page, you'll see some interesting visualizations of all current emissions data on the platform. And if you scroll down the page, you'll see a list of each major sector covered in our inventory. And you can click the arrow to see the subsectors included in each. This is a great place to find quick explanations of what each sector covers and a very brief summary of our methodology for each sector plus links to lengthier methodology documents to download. We encourage you to check out the rest of the site, like our News and Insights page. We're constantly adding to our blog, which includes some helpful explainers and team member interviews. You can also find press releases and news coverage here. Another resource for common questions can be found here on our FAQ page, which we are regularly adding to and updating. If you'd like to share some quick feedback on how you're using the platform, we always love to hear from our users. So just scroll down to the bottom of our FAQ page for a survey link. And finally, we hope you'll take a minute to subscribe to our newsletter for monthly updates on our work. You can do that at the bottom of most pages of our website. So thank you all for taking the time to learn a little bit about the Climate Trace platform today. We've created another couple of videos to walk through certain parts of the website in even more detail. So we encourage you to take a look at the other content posted on our YouTube channel.
To contact our team, just go to www.climatetrace.org slash contact. And for media inquiries, you can email us at media at climatetrace.org.